Welcome everybody. Radicalized Truth Survives. My name is Heidi Sigmund Kuda, and I'm here with Jim Stewartson and High Fidelity. We are a show that investigates disinformation, and we bring you global experts uh, who really are incredible minds in the war against the uh, fascist creep that is occurring globally. Uh, we are on episode 68, which is amazing because we did a kind of endless summer of breakers. Um, of course, there's going to be a, a, a new zone flooded with shit all the time. So we will uh, always alert our viewers to what we think is most important and where to uh, put your energy in your fight. Um, hello, gentlemen. Shall we just jump in? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's jump into Front Loaded, guys. Front Loaded. So with Front Loaded, which is uh, things that I'd like you to know about that I think are most, most important from the week, we have um, Tucker Carlson uh, likely having his own dub show on Russian state TV, why that's important. And this actually comes from uh, Francis Scar, who is the BBC Russian monitor. Why I feel that's very important uh, is because, as Jim has been saying, uh, the Russian propaganda's ass has been hanging out. It's been all hanging out. And as I reported a few months back, Tucker Carlson's father was affiliated uh, uh, with an organization that was doing uh, work for um, Hungary, uh, Orban's goons. And why that's important is that into the in, in, written into the contract was that one of Orban's goons had to appear on Tucker Carlson's show. And when we talk about Orban, we're still talking about Putin. These are, this is all part of this global threat that we expose on this show. So Jim, you look like you want to say something. <laughs> no, just, I mean, so <laughs> yeah, Orban is not just Putin's puppet. He's a Nazi. Yeah. Like Orban is straight up white supremacist, like, and he doesn't hide it at all. Right. Um, the, when, CPAC, you know, or had a had a convention over there, right? But the fact that Tucker is literally, he literally has a show on Russian state television. What more do we need? This is the, the entire problem that we have is that we have not, you know, said out loud that Russia is our enemy. Mm -hmm. And therefore people like, Tucker can do this freely. We need to start understanding what we're up against and, and you know, start treating traitors like traitors again. Right. Um, I do want to say that the report uh, notes that this came from an ad that he saw on Russian state TV's channel Russia 24. And it does say that Tucker Carlson has landed him a job there. Um, we can show that ad uh, if you like, Hi-Fi. Why don't you go ahead and roll it? Russia, 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 24. Francis Scar does say that he hasn't seen this reported anywhere else, so to not take it as confirmed, but this is an ad that is running on Russian state TV. So, um, these guys make no secret about it anyway. I, I have three words I'd like to add. Um, and they're very simple words, actually. Lord, ha, ha. I don't know. Is ha, ha one word or two? I'm going with two. <laughs> um, Lord, ha, ha was a propagandist uh, for the Germans during World War II. And he met a very, very messy end. And uh, why we're not treating this situation the same, I'll, I'll never understand. Absolutely. And I do want to say that part of our theme of this particular episode does have to do with propagandists and Fox News. And I'm very excited that we're going to be bringing one of the coordinators of Truth Tuesdays on to do an interview about Rupert stepping down. And for those who don't know, a group of people uh, from the East Coast have been out protesting in front of Fox's headquarters for years now about how propaganda kills and the uh, attention that they've um, been getting in recent months is very encouraging. But with the news about Rupert Murdoch stepping down, I thought it was important that we uh, ensure that we have a good uh, 
conversation about what that could possibly mean. Of course, Tucker Carlson is no longer on Fox, but he is still what Sunbiot calls the enforcer of this party of Putin's GOP in America. So this is a very, very um, important uh, potential development. So let's keep our eye on that. And then also, why don't we just move on to the second item of Front Loaded, which I think is um, a very, very important uh, story as well. Um, As you guys know, uh, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff is the nation's highest ranking military office. And General Milley was attacked by Trump recently. Uh, And essentially, uh, he, Trump essentially in his own propagandist way called for Milley's death. Because why? Because Milley did not abide by uh, Trump's bullshittery. And why this is important is I want to draw everyone's attention to Ruth Ben-Ghiat's lucid substack. Because on Wednesday, she's going to be dropping a story about how there's a precursor to this that occurred in Chile when a somebody who had the exact same position as General Milley did not abide and his execution was called for and he was executed. And then guess who took his job? Pinochet. And so Ruth wants us to understand that these types of stochastic terrorist threats Uh, have very real world ramifications. And it's important to note that what Trump was reacting to was a September 21 piece by Jeffrey Goldberg about Milley in the Atlantic, which which portrayed Milley uh, as an important check on erratic, uninformed and the dangerous president. And I'm reading those words directly from Heather Cox Richardson's most recent substack, where she also addresses this. Jim, what say you? Uh, Well, uh, General Milley is uh, stepping down. And as we know, uh, Tommy Tuberville is currently preventing any military uh, appointments. Therefore, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, who is most responsible for organizing the defense of the United States of America, <laughs> will be vacant. Um, if uh, anyone recalls, uh, when Merrick Garland was supposed to uh, be the Supreme Court justice, they kept it vacant. Why did they do that? So that they could put a Federalist Society member in there. That is literally what they're doing. They're trying to delay all of these appointments so that in their fantasy world that Trump gets reelected, he can fill it with um, you know, people who are going to enforce a fascist state. The the okay. last the last you know barrier to a, a fascist takeover is the military, right? You can't you cannot take over America without having the military. We've been over this before on the show that uh, you know it's authoritarian capture, and they've already succeeded in the capture of our judicial branch. Uh, if Trump gets reelected, there's the executive branch. And if Tuberville succeeds in his mission, uh, there's the military. So, yeah, we're in trouble. I do want to say that one thing that Ruth continues to say every single week at our Lucid meetings, at her Lucid Substack meetings, is just how dangerous Mike Flynn is in all this, because he is the intersection of the military and the uh, Christo fascism uh, as well as, of course, the intersection of all the disinformation, QAnon, radicalization that's going on. So this is something very, very important to keep an eye on. Ruth is going to be writing about it um, this week on her Lucid Substack. Uh, I encourage everybody, if you're not already following her there, that you should do so. <laughs> Ruth is a national treasure, and uh, you need to uh, follow her wherever you Yeah, she's important. Um, And I did ask her that our next story, my last front loaded item is a review that I did on A Storm Foretold, which is uh, the new Roger Stone documentary. We've discussed it on the show, but as Hi-Fi said, it's documenting a crime scene and it's an important review. I encourage everybody to read it. I really am grateful for Hi-Fi always kind of coaching me when I have to write these really important pieces. Um, 
And, and as Hi-Fi said, it's pretty scathing. Uh, and if you are not a member of Byline Supplement, please consider supporting a group of, you know, international small team of investigative reporters. If you are nickels down and can't afford to be a member, you can always reach out to me at Betty Dangerous and I will make sure that you get a copy of this. But it is freaking important. It's so important because in it we learn that Stone acknowledged that Trump had lost. We learned that Stone booted, rebooted the Stop the Steal, uh, you know, uh, uh, narrative, that uh, bullshittery narrative that he had originally uh, created in 2016 and then rebooted in 2020. And we see him coordinating with uh, the leaders of the Oath Keepers and the Proud Boys, who, as this viewership knows, are uh, received very long prison sentences for sedition against the United States of America. So it's perfectly worded that it is a document of a crime scene. So yesterday I asked Ruth, why is Roger Stone still free? And for that matter, Steve Bannon and Mike Flynn, and, and who also is mentioned in this documentary, as Jim noted weeks ago, uh, with Stone on the phone with him, asking Flynn to recruit military to be part of this Stop the Steal false narrative, which they knew was false. Um, and Ruth said there's not a day goes by where she doesn't ask the same question and actually is up at night worrying about this stuff because she basically said they're not just criminals in the U.S. They're committing global crimes. Look at Steve Bannon and the work that he's been doing globally. So she asked the same question and does not know the answer to it, which really is the the answer. We don't know why Roger Stone, Mike Flynn, Steve Bannon uh, have not been indicted for sedition against the United States. That is the million dollar question. Can, can I bring up one other uh, brilliant um, uh, fascist scholar uh, or scholar of fascism, uh, Sarah Kenzior, who um, invented the phrase transnational crime syndicate. Wow. That is what we are dealing with. Um, she said this, you know, nearly a decade ago now. Wow. Um, we are we are talking about a criminal mafia-like network that stretches from Moscow to, you know, St. Petersburg, Florida, yeah. right? Um, so, um, you know, we we need to understand that. And when we're when we're thinking about things like why aren't Mike Flynn and Roger Stone and these guys not being prosecuted. Again, we have to understand that the government is full of people, people who have been targeted. And as we know, Charles McGonigal and others, um, you know, uh, have been identified and confessed and convicted of being assets. Um, so, you know, uh, yeah. We need to look very carefully at, at what's happening in the government and put as much pressure on them as possible through the media and through our own voices. Thank you, Jim. And before we move on to uh, why it matters, I just want to say that I believe if we look at Kansas to Ohio, that Americans are definitely waking up to the fact that they have to perform if they want to keep their democracy. But I do feel like we are losing the information war because in my travels, I keep on meeting people who have been psyoped. I met somebody yesterday who explained to me that his mother-in-law died from the vaccine. And I didn't say anything, but I just was like, there's these clues that people leave wherever you go that shows that they are being psyoped away from reality into unreality and until our leaders create that new deal that we've been begging for to fight the information war i think we will continue to be uh losing people at scale this, this is the, the the my main goal right now is to get people to understand that this is a real thing that these mm -hmm. are psychological operations this is coercive propaganda that has changed people's minds to mm -hmm. believe bullshit right what Heidi is describing has been 
duplicated now across the world hundreds of millions of times, mm -hmm. if not in the billions at this point, yeah. um, of, of people who have been affected by this psychological warfare. Um, and, and until our media and our government starts to recognize it, name it, and give us defenses to it, it's simply going to get worse. And I do want to say that the Biden administration just announced a very New Deal style, uh, you know, group for to address climate change. And that's a climate core. That's amazing. Let's do it for information warfare as well. Please, President Biden. All right. Why it matters. Why does it matter? Why does it matter? Why high fidelity? Our first story this week. Oh no, here we go again. This is from the Washington Post. Fears grow that overseas targeted killing by states is on the rise. And this is based on the accusations that Canada made that uh, members of the Indian government had something to do with the death of the Sikh leader, Hardeep Singh Nijar. Now, um, I'm just... The lack of foresight, the lack of understanding, and the lack of depth that this article shows, because if anyone has been paying attention to anything at all, they would know that Russia poisoned <laughs> Alexander Litvinenko, right? They would know that Russia poisoned Sergei and Yulia Skripal. Mm -hmm. This is not something new. And what needs to happen is governments who are democratic, who do not believe in extrajudicial killing on their soil, need to hold these perpetrators accountable if it is proven that they have engaged in these acts. Why I mean, that has not happened, why no one is talking about that, I don't know. And Alexei Navalny, <laughs> I mean, uh, We've, yeah, it, the 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 absolute blindness to the incredibly destructive windows safety record of the Russian government is amazing, right? People fall out of fucking windows, get shot out of the sky, get poisoned all the time. The, you know. <laughs> Like, oh no, a Russian bank CEO fell out of a roof because, yeah. I don't know, he was sad because uh, they lost their soccer game. It's fucking ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. The dude is a murderer yeah. and he does it all the time in the open. And we're just like, oh, oh no, another oligarch fell out of a window. It's yeah. incredible that we don't name what this is, which is a mass murdering psychopath yeah. who goes around and and just offs whoever he wants. Yeah. Well, I feel like the fossil fuel cabal, the extractive cabal, has been really great at covering up climate change. And I think they're doing a pretty great job of covering up uh, the mafia state of uh, Russia's, uh, you know, criminal activity. So... I feel like that's uh, you, part of it. You had mentioned Pinochet earlier. I would just like to remind uh, our viewers that Pinochet actually ordered killings on United States soil. Mm -hmm. So if these are the types of things we want to continue, uh, simply allow, you know, treat these authoritarians as normal right give mbs immunity for the murder of jamal kasoji uh there's so many ridiculous things that need to be done yeah and i i does america have the political will to do it i wonder i hope so we'll see we'll see we'll see we'll see tbd all right thank you for TBD. that what's next next story is rolled in bones uh because it turns out that governor ron DeSantis has been meeting with Miriam Adelson and other GOP mega donors in Jerusalem. Uh, mm -hmm. The reason this story is important is because Miriam Adelson is the uh, wife of 
former uh, casino mogul Sheldon Adelson. Mm -hmm. And uh, Sheldon Adelson was, uh, well, he was a political player on the side of authoritarianism, I'm afraid mm -hmm. to say. Mm -hmm. uh, and we also need to, to, only to look to Stephen Wynn, who uh, had to register as a foreign agent for China. Uh, for some reason, there seems to be a lot of gambling and casino type activity, given the fact that we know uh, Donald Trump's casino, Taj Mahal, ended up paying a $10 million fine for money laundering. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it strikes me as odd that uh, more people in the media aren't paying attention to that. Well, I'm glad that you are high five. Mafia activity in the casinos? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Wait a minute. <laughs> Who knew? No, it's, I mean, but seriously, right? I mean, it was born from the ma mafia in, in Nevada and, you know, the fact that, that international mafia is involved as well is, you know, far from shocking. Um, uh, but yes, it, it, it should be, you know, all that shit needs to get shut down. Word. All right. High five. What else you got? Uh, finally, this week, I just want to bring our viewers' attention to something that happened on last Friday, and that McGonagall goes again. Yes, that's right. Uh, former FBI special agent in charge, Charles McGonagall, pled guilty to concealing information from the FBI. And, uh, gee, no kidding, right? But here's, here's my point I want to make with this story, is, uh, you know, this kind of puts a different light on everything that Charles McGonigal has done throughout his career, both as a former uh, FBI special agent in charge and while he was an FBI special agent in charge. And I wonder why we're not having Senate hearings or why the FBI is not conducting an internal review of what the heck just happened there, because that is some very, very serious allegations of foreign interference in our intelligence community. Jim? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> also, uh, the New York FBI was the center of the disinformation in the, in the New York Police Department. It uh, was the center of the disinformation that validated um, Comey reopening her emails 11 days before the election. Mm -hmm. The October surprise, as it were, came from a bunch of corrupt law enforcement in New York. Mm -hmm. And Charles McGonigal was in charge of counterintelligence. Recall now, on uh, October 31st, 2016, there was a New York Times story that said very confidently, FBI sees no clear link to Russia. Anonymous sources. Who could possibly have planted that bullshit? Right? Um, there's a problem in the FBI. And uh, there remains a problem. We know that the FBI tried to, uh, did, in fact, delay any investigation beyond the, the, the you know, small players um, for two years. While all of us were going crazy trying to figure out why is nobody getting arrested, the FBI. In the Biden administration was preventing, according to DOJ sources, was preventing them from moving forward. We've still got a problem and it needs to be unavoidable. Oh, yeah. I mean, absolutely. As Wes Clark Jr. said, our friend from American PSYOP, there needs to be a purge in our intelligence agencies between those that are facilitating the global fascist threat and those that are just trying to do the labor that you know is necessary for democracies to function so yes precisely that is a big big issue and we will continue to expose it thank you for that i'm so glad that um we didn't miss that uh charles mcgonigal and the uh stories of the members of our intelligence agencies who are on the payroll for Frickin' Russia are, is very vitally important. So um, what better place for us to kick off Hellscape?
Jim Stewartson's hellscape. Oh, fuck. So we were talking, um, you know, earlier in the news um, about the fact that there appears to be still a problem um, in the FBI. That um, through the Biden administration, we know that the FBI was intentionally dragging their feet and dragging um, Merrick Garland's feet um, to investigate Donald Trump and Mike Flynn and anybody else. Um, h- higher than Proud Boy and Oath Keeper. Um, and they delayed it for two years, right? Um, I'm also, however, concerned um, that the Defense Department is not being open and honest with us um, about the events of January 6th. Um, on the same day that Mike Flynn, Sidney Powell, and Patrick Byrne went to the White House to meet with Donald Trump. Not only the same day, within the same evening, within the same few hours, Chris Miller personally told the entire Defense Department to shut down communications with the Biden transition. So. December 18th, 2020, Mike Flynn, Sidney Powell, Patrick Byrne, Donald Trump, Rudy Giuliani are planning the insurrection. And Chris Miller, literally simultaneously, shuts down comms with the transition. And Trump, at the end of the meeting, tweets, big protest, will be wild. This happened within three, four hours. The whole meeting all the way through. Oh, shit. Shut down communications with the Biden team. Uh, <laughs> right? And then Trump starts the, the parade um, immediately after the meeting. Within a couple of days, I was reporting live on Twitter that there were violent white nationalists heading to Washington, D.C. on January 6th, and it was going to be violent, that they were saying out loud that it was going to be violent. No one in the Department of Defense said anything about any of this, expressed any concern about it. Worse. On January 4th, Chris Miller, acting Secretary of Defense, who was installed there after the election, wrote a bananas unusual memo that said, you can't have the Capitol Police with any of any, you know, stuff, any, you know, weaponry or anything that might, you know, look like you know something is going to be violent and they and he said and if you want to use the national guard you have to go through me personally which had never happened that was a new a new invented role for himself specifically invented for january 6th so the same guy who shut down con to the biden transition ensured that he would be the gatekeeper to any defense of the Capitol. Two days later, when it happened, Chris Miller and Charles Flynn sat on the phone and talked about optics for hours, three hours to be precise, enough time to learn that the insurrection had failed. So they said, yep, go clean it up. Failed. Okay. We're, you know, moving on. There's nothing unclear about what happened here. There is a very clear chain of events. 
there is motive, means, opportunity, and evidence in public that people inside the Department of Defense cooperated with the insurrection. So why aren't we hearing about this? Why have we never heard a peep from the Department of Defense? And why, for fuck's sake, is Charles Flynn commanding general of 100,000 men and women in the armed forces whose lives would be on the line if there was a conflict with China. A conflict, by the way, that Charles Flynn and Mike Flynn are pushing for. So what is going on at the Department of Defense? Why is Secretary Austin not doing something about this rogue general, as General Paul Eaton called Mike Flynn? It's time to open the doors and, and let the fucking sunlight in, you guys. You can't cover this up forever. We, we know what happened here. Shine the light on it. Otherwise, we're going to dark. Arrest Mike Flynn. We are so honored to bring in our guest for episode 68. This is Julia DeLaurier. She is um, one of the organizers of Truth Tuesdays. Uh, they have been actively protesting Fox News for years out in front of the headquarters through rain, snow, sleet, whatever they, whatever they need to do. And finally, in the recent months, uh, they're finally getting recognition for their efforts. But in light of Rupert Murdoch announcing that he's stepping down, I thought it'd be very important for us to put the spotlight back on, back on Fox. Uh, let's go ahead and bring Julie in. Julie, thank you so much for being with us today. And thank you so much for all of your incredible activism and very, very grateful that you've always been so responsive whenever I need somebody to comment on this stuff for the series that I've been doing for Byline Supplement. Uh, those of you who are new viewers might not know that I was a news producer within a local Fox affiliate for 15 years, learned a lot, did some great work, got out a decade ago uh, when uh, I knew that I, if I stayed, it would be lethal. Um, Julie, before we jump into the breaker, I'd like you to tell our viewers what it's like working with a group of people so dedicated to exposing Fox's and Fox's lies for the last few years. What's that experience been like? It, it's, it's incredible. It's been incredible. Uh, we show up every week on Fox turf at, at the Fox Plaza uh, at, at News Corp headquarters. And uh, we see Jean Janine Pirro walk in. We see um, Greg Gutfeld walk past us and give him a piece of our mind. Uh, we see their guests walk in and we get to give them a piece of their mind. We don't just limit ourselves to protesting outside Fox every Tuesday. We also have disrupted live Hannity tapings, live audience Hannity tapings. Um, four attempts, three have been successful. Um, we disrupt the Fox and Friends summer concert series. And for that, we have to wake up and be there at seven o'clock in the morning. So that is some serious dedication. And uh, the bang for the buck on that is pretty remarkable. Uh, before we started the, the uh, Fox and Friends summer concert series disruptions, and by the way, we never disrupt the musicians, that would be rude. We only disrupt the Fox hosts. And they used to come out and banter with the crowd, banter with the musicians. Once we started appearing, the Fox hosts, in order to bury the fact that they are being protested, sequestered themselves in the studio. They had to hole up in the studio 
So four, five, six of the most activists outside were able to skew what Fox broadcast across the entire country. It's incredibly satisfying. Wow. And you were part of the genius squad that started using the electronic billboards out in front of Fox. That's incredible. How were you guys able to do that? We have some incredibly talented and resourceful members. That was not me. I just grabbed the guy who was willing to do it. And it was his idea. Wow. And I said, please, yes. Uh, he uh, threw that together very quickly and brilliantly. Can I give him a shout out or not? Yes, please do. Okay. Of course. Jonathan Walker, Jonathan Walker. He's just a terrifically talented guy. Uh, and he, uh, he put two of those together, one for, um, out front of Fox in, I'm blanking on the dates. I think it was March. It was, yes. It was cold. I remember that. Yeah. 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 And then he put another one together uh, when we were protesting the Fox upfronts, the the um, you know the the advertisers upfront week. Uh, yes. That can, can, little synopsis on on what an upfront week is for your audience. Uh, it's when uh, networks uh, pitch advertisers to buy blocks of advertisement upfront. For the season to come, and uh, uh, Fox's upfront presentation—it's the dog and pony show, basically. Yeah, right. And theirs was apparently just miserable, just pathetic. That's where they—that's where all the money gets made. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's where the money gets made. That's right. I mean, that is a brilliant strategic idea, by the way. And Thank can you. I just we, say something briefly sure. to our audience? Be like Julie. I'm serious. Uh, honestly, yeah. I'm, being, yeah. I'm being dead serious yeah. right now. Our country is under attack, right? By propagandists, by foreign backed propagandists who are trying to change the brains of our citizens. And we need to fight that in every legal manner possible. And Julie is yeah. a Sterling example of this, and and within legal, um, civil means, you know, please be like Julie. Jim. Thank you, thank you for that. That that, and you're highlighting really the nugget uh, that that we're all working on, and that you know I'm talking strategies and 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 uh, and, uh, but but you're talking why we're doing it, and and. It's because it's this network posing as news and fooling people into thinking that they're hearing news. And we're trying to get visibility and get the message across that it's a propaganda outlet. It's yeah. nothing but propaganda. And it's not, it's not like brainwashing is brainwashing and we yeah. know we know how to deprogram one cult member at a time we know how to do that but how to scale up and deprogram a quarter of our country it's it it's been incredibly painful to watch people i grew up with lose them yeah lose their minds to actually evil, toxic poison. Yeah. Uh, and, and so that's our motivation. And it's much, you know, that's a much more important thing than just our, our, uh, our logistics and our strategies. It, it's uh, what we're all, all of us trying to win back the soul of our country. Oh, thank you for that, Julie. Yeah, I, uh, those words are so important. Ah. I, I want to um, to offer a little bit of hope. Our friend Jen Senko, um, yes. brainwashing, and my dad. Um, we've got lots and lots of other 
um, you know, anecdotal evidence mm -hmm. that if you stop brainwashing people, yes, they will stop being brainwashed. Right. It's not complicated, right? Like you turn a, off a, the spigot. Turn yeah. off the spigot. It, it's like it's like it's like lead lead in the water in Flint. Yeah. What do you do? It's a mystery. Fucking get the lead out. Right? Yeah. Right. So yeah. Let fresh water, water flow again. Yeah. Let you are the fruit out flow the again. And, yeah. And, so and, and, turn and, off yeah. the spigot of lies. That's right. And Jim has said that repeatedly, as have you and as had Hi Fi. I do want to say, speaking of people that we grew up with, I went to Catholic school with Greg Gutfeld, who bullied oh me, my. by the way. Oh and mu multiple people from that particular class are engaging in this type of coercive, uh, very, very, um, let's just say evil propaganda. Um, but I do want to say <laughs> that in my most recent Fox expose for byline supplement detox from Fox, which featured one of your uh, members of Truth Tuesdays out in front of Fox headquarters, with a sign saying detox from Fox. Um, I did get a wonderful quote from you where you said, we won't quit until Fox stops lying. And you said any day, any minute, Rupert Murdoch can send word downstairs to stop lying, to become a legitimate news organization, to stop hurting America. We believe in free speech just like they do. They have a legal right to lie and we have a legal right to call out their lies and we won't stop working to help America detox from Fox. We now know there has been a shift. And Hi-Fi, do you want to address uh, the Rupert issue? Do you want to bring that in? And we'll start uh, asking Julie what she thinks about that. And, and, and this is, uh, yeah, this is, well, first, let me say, Julie, I would like you to pass on uh, my appreciation I've always been a fan of Johnny Walker. I want you to let him know that even more so now. Um, <laughs> cheers. Cheers for that. He's going to love that. <laughs> um, but here's my question for you. Um, so Rupert Murdoch, everyone's all in a tizzy because Rupert's stepping down. Uh, oh, but he's putting his son Lachlan in charge. And to me, this is, oh, uh, here's Rupert 2.0. It's going to be the same, if not worse. What do you think? It's a non-event. I, I really believe it's a non-event. Wow. I, I, I think uh, it's a, it's sort of like he's, he's running a trial balloon to see if he can pass Lachlan off. And he, he's not retired. For God's sakes, the man is not going to give up power. He, 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 he he's won't. German em emeritus. He's, he's, <laughs> not, he's, not, oh, wow. he's such a rose. Oh, wow. You can a add some Latin words if you want, but you know. Thank you. Yeah. No, it's 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 really sort of funny watching everybody get hysterical about. Oh, Rupert's going to. He's not fading from the scene until you know, and I'm not going to say it. Uh, and only then, when that day happens, will there be an opportunity for actual fundamental Salvation. change at Fox. I'm sorry. Um, the, sorry, no, go on. <laughs> <laughs> Jim probably I mean, said something macabre. <laughs> I, I, I would actually, I would like I mean, to say I, that it, Rupert will probably, even after that event, probably uh, still control well, Fox. <laughs> Well, it, it, but yeah. it is really the only opportunity uh, when when the four kids get to vote on uh, how how the trust is going to go forward mm -hmm. is the only time um, that that there's an actual opportunity for change at Fox. Uh, and, you know, my dream and a girl can dream is that um, they decide to sell off Fox News to a legitimate news organization. Mm -hmm. And whoever heads that news organization says, hey, let's be a real news organization. And let's, hey, all you Fox hosts, you can keep your programs. You could even keep your right word slant, but you got to stop lying. You got to stop lying. Um, and then, then we can go home, you know? Um, 
Wow. I mean, I, I would prefer I would prefer that it just was a legitimate news organization with no slant whatever, just proffering facts and news. That would be ideal. But it's really the only opportunity. It's the only I, I don't see any other way it's gonna fundamentally change from propaganda wow. to news. Wow. All I know is when you were saying how he'll still probably haunt us in death, I was picturing Jacob Marley in chains, you know. <laughs> so but 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 it's interesting because Fox uh, outlets, you know, News Corps outlets have lied and lied and lied. And in the multiple pieces I've done for Byline Supplement, there are studies showing their propaganda kills. Their propaganda around COVID killed people. Those watching uh, Hannity shows or, yes, okay, so thank you. Wow, there's our promo. Ah. There's our visual. But, but, but I will tell you, Julie, this goes back many, many years when Fox was in the hot seat uh, in the UK over mm -hmm. the phone hack scandal. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, here it goes. They're finally going to get their due. And what happened after their pack of wolves uh, was hacking everybody and people like Amy Winehouse actually ultimately was like, who in my family, who who of my trusted people are exposing me to the media? And it turned out it was nefarious actors on the payroll for Rupert Murdoch. And instead of their, I mean, yes, there were consequences. Yes, the Sky News deal was affected, all of that. But what happened ultimately a couple of years later? Their profits doubled. Their profits, it's all, Rupert Murdoch, having worked in that system, I know all they look at are the right side of ledgers. And with the Dominion right. suit, we found out the anchors knew, according to court mm -hmm. documents and emails and text exchanges, the anchors knew the big mm -hmm. lie that was being promoted on their, their network by Sidney Powell and Rudy Giuliani and their own uh, network uh, anchor hacks. They knew these people were lying. And right. Rupert had to sign a check for almost a billion dollars, but they can still lie. So what does, that yeah. say to, what does that say to you as an activist that, that they can still lie after being exposed internally as knowingly lying? Right. First, I want to go back to your previous point about about uh, Sky News and and I, I, I to make connections. We you know we we make the mistake in America of looking at Murdoch and really not looking at Murdoch, but just looking at Fox News and the damage Fox News has done, rather than making the connection of how the Murdochs, Rupert, but the Murdochs have skewed and perverted politics and society throughout the English speaking world and therefore in the world at large. So without Murdoch, you would not have had Brexit. Without Murdoch, you would not have had the Iraq war. We're going back decades here. The damage this man has unleashed on the world goes back decades. You know, everyone's looking at this narrow slice. Oh, Trump. You know, he set the stage. Murdoch set the stage for Trump. Murdoch made Trump possible. Mur Murdoch made Trump's big lie after he lost possible. Murdoch made January 6th possible. I just want to, you know, say it again. There's so, not just Fox, but Murdoch has so much blood on their, on his hands and and one positive aspect I see of of this um, you know the, the hysteria around news is the Murdoch's retirement news is that it may shine a light on Murdoch and the Murdochs per se rather than just their disparate uh, entities uh, Sky News uh, the Sun uh, Fox. And what I would really love to see is the Murdoch name made, made poison, like the Sackler's name is attached to opiate deaths across America. I want to see the Murdoch name 
attached to the poison and the, the, the destruction they've wrought all across the world. And I'm okay. sorry, I, I went off on that and forgot your original question. <laughs> no, it doesn't matter. I don't care. That was brilliant. I wanted to, to follow that up. That was awesome. Go, and go to the to the deep source of this, which is the fairness doctrine uh -huh, was right. something that was uh, in the United States for a long time where right. all news networks had to provide the same amount of information about you know both parties and it, it was a it was imperfect but but it, we all had a common set of facts it was something and yeah. what happened ronald reagan <sighs> let that expire for his friend rupert murdoch right and that's important and guess right? who introduced reagan him knew. jim guess who introduced him to his friend rupert murdoch roy cohn brought him into the White House. Roy Cohn, the mob lawyer for all the gangsters of five boroughs brought him in. Roy right. Cohen, who was Trump and Fred Trump's lawyer and Roger Stone's mentor and Trump's mentor, the mob lawyer, Roy Cohen. So right. I do think if we're gonna start making these connections and uh, America needs to zoom out a little bit further and go, wait a minute, what has been what kind of poison has been uh, perpetrated on our country? And if I sound angry right now, it's because That's people right. like me who lost their fathers to the right wing ecosystem when their fathers like Jen Senko's dad and my dad were bleeding heart liberals, yeah. union loving liberals. And then toward the end days, it's like they get this poison over and over again, coercive propaganda. And Jim, what does Jim always say? No one brainwashes themselves. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't know what to say to that. It just breaks my heart. It just breaks my heart. To, I mean, I grew up in a, in a neighborhood, um, a working class neighborhood that was about in, in Missouri, in Kansas City. That was about half Republican and half Democrats. A lot of them were union workers at the Chevy plant, not the Chevy plant, the Chevy plant. And, you know, we had neighborhood picnics together. We were friends. We and, and the oh, yeah. divisiveness, mm -hmm. the, 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 the way they've taught, the way Fox has conditioned people to hate now mm -hmm. is I something I've never experienced. Mm -hmm. When we stand outside Fox and and a Fox watcher passes us, mm -hmm. the vitriol, the 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 toxicity in their mm -hmm. hatred is palpable mm -hmm. and it's frightening. Mm -hmm. And it's not something I ever expected to experience from a fellow American. I mm -hmm. I mean I consider, I'm not, I don't consider myself, I am a patriot. Mm -hmm. I am a patriot. I love mm -hmm. this country deeply. Mm -hmm. And, um, and they view me as an enemy of the country. Mm -hmm. And, and not, and, and here's one more, before Fox, before Rupert Murdoch poisoned American minds, if, if we had a common em enemy, say, I don't know, Putin, if we had a common enemy, we would close ranks mm -hmm. immediately. Mm -hmm. Republican, Democrat, independent, you name it. We would close ranks against that enemy in a nanosecond. Mm -hmm. And that's gone. Yeah. And it astounds me. I, 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 I've seen it for a, almost a decade now, and it's still hard for me to grasp. Yeah. yeah, we we have been denied our shared narrative of truth because of Fox News and the other clones of Fox News. Uh, yeah. They've they've denied us our shared narrative of truth. We had a president in 1950, Eisenhower, who said we were going to fight polio in all the communities, all the towns, all the streets. Elvis got up there and got a shot. And guess what? 
everybody yeah. went and got a vaccine. And you know why? Because yeah. Putin and Murdoch and the likes were not infiltrating brains right. to, uh, against reality. I, I do want to, um, I do, I do want to say, I, I did a thread a few years ago showing all of the Fox connections to Russia. So mm-hmm. it is not worth, it's worth noting that this is part of a global war. And I'm very, very Absolutely. grateful that you are willing to frame it as such. Uh, one of your ally organizations, the Media and Democracy Project, is having Ruth Bengiot uh, right. on October 4th on an event Zoom where she's going to talk about how media and journalism can defend democracy from fascism. That is the exact title, how media and journalism can defend yeah. democracy from fascism. Can we in America inoculate ourselves from fascism if our media continues to include Fox News? I don't believe so. I don't believe so. And that's why we're fighting so hard. And and to, to have uh, Ben Giat on uh, uh, speak with, with Media and Democracy Project is perfect because that's what we are doing. That's we are fighting fascists. And I and that's one of my taglines. Uh, join us because it feels good to fight fascists. Nice. And it, it, it's it's uh, it really is the crux of it, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, when when Republicans and Democrats both believed and had faith in our democratic process, this was a non-issue. This was not an issue. We weren't fighting. We were fighting fascists overseas, not not in our own country, not on my own block. It's I I want to see the end of this. I can't. I, I can't say with any surety that I'll see the end of this in my lifetime. I do believe that we will extricate ourselves from this eventually. I do believe in that arc of justice and progress. But I, and I, I will absolutely not stop. And I don't think anyone I'm on screen with here no. will stop either. No. And that that's part of what gives me such hope and determination. Because I think I'll speak for all of us. I think we all believe in the promise of America mm-hmm. <laughs> and we won't give up on it. <laughs> and fascism has no part in that at all, at all. And Media and Democracy Project is just doing amazing work. Yeah. We, I, I'm so proud to be um, their partner. I'm so proud that Truth Tuesdays is a partner of Media and Democracy Project. We are, you know, the street rabble rousers. We need that. Jump, you know, but but they're doing they're doing the real behind the scenes, nitty gritty, substance. May I say, substantive work mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that you know it's it's all of a piece. We mm-hmm. do our part, uh, but I'm I'm so um, impressed by the tangible work they're doing. This this FE, FCC petition, for instance, yes, is such uh, such a precedent breaking step, and I I, I think it's the FCC petition uh, to uh, have the Philadelphia local affiliate not. Yeah. Renew its license. I think it's tremendously important to say yes. What we keep hearing, oh, it's just an affiliate. They don't have, they pay no. fees to Fox. They enrich the Murdochs. Murdoch money is blood money. And what's brilliant about that, and I'm glad you brought that up, is that Republicans like Bill Crystal and the uh, former, uh, you know, Fox producers have signed on with the Media and Democracy yes. Project to try yes. to deny a Fox affiliate from getting to renew its license. And that's where it starts. Um, I don't know, Julie, that was just so brilliant. I'm so grateful for this interview. Hi, fight. looks like there's something else you wanted to say before we sign off. I was just going to ask how you felt about the FCC maybe acting against Murdoch, but uh, you kind of answered it. <laughs> she, she kind of answered it. Jim, is there anything else you want to bring up? 
I, I just wanted to to thank you for for um, speaking up about being against fascism. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we should redefine MAGA as make anti-fascism great again. Yes. The, I'm on it. Listen, yes. Listen, the, the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence are fundamentally anti-fascist. Mm -hmm. The entire point was to get out from the theocratic fascist reign That's right. of our of our colonizers. And and we we chose to to become independent independent of that fascism. And we need to remind people that the entire point of America is to protect ourselves from fascists and we should <laughs> not let them back into our country. And I'm grateful for your work. Thank you Thank so you. much. And you are indeed a patriot. Yes, you are. And and our very, very first news item in this uh, particular episode was Tucker Carlson allegedly having his own show on Russian state TV. So I think that buttons things up here. Uh, you will find Julie at uh, Truth Over Fox on the tweeters, the tweeter formerly known as Twitter. The X, formerly known as Twitter, you will Jitter. also uh, oh, Jitter. Jitter. You will also find uh, her uh, through Rise and Resist New York, TruthTuesdays.org. If you want to start protesting with her, because the more people that are out there visibly, the more pressure is applied. The work you are doing is so important. Is there any last thing that you would like to leave our viewers with uh, as uh, they? you know, kind of decide for themselves, like how they're going to participate in the labor of democracy. We have we have a, a flyer we hand out at, at every uh, Truth Tuesdays. And uh, one item that everyone can do anywhere you are, if you are in a doctor's office, if you're in a bowling alley, uh, uh, a gym, a hotel lobby, and Fox is on the television, go to the management, go to the desk and ask politely, please turn off Fox. It offends me. It hurts America. By playing Fox, you are hurting America. It's incredibly easy and it's incredibly effective. It's something you can do, everyone can do to stop Fox. Everyone needs to take action. Find what actions you can do and take those actions. Protest at your local Fox affiliate. Uh, if you're in New York, join us any Tuesday. But most of all, take action in your community to raise the issue of Fox hurting America and take steps to stop Fox. Julie Delorier, thank you so very much for being with us here today. This interview was an honor. Thank you very much. I'm honored to be in your company.